This is problem 15.179 on page 1072. At the instant shown, bar BC has an angular velocity of 3 radians per second and an angular acceleration of 2 radians per second squared, both counterclockwise. Determine the angular acceleration of the plate. All right, so let me sketch the system. There's the plate. I'm just going to draw it up to the pivot point at D. Point A is three inches up from D. Should probably give myself a little more plate here because point A defines the radius of a slot. Now that slot goes over to right about there. And the radius of the slot to the center line, the radius of the slot is four inches. So this point here called point B then is of course four inches away from D, at least horizontally. Okay. And I'll put that at the top for it. I think I'd rather have it up there. Now, constraining the motion of pin B is another link. That connects to ground on the same level as D. This is point C. And point C is six inches over from point B horizontally. The angular speed of body BC, let's put it over here. The angular speed of body BC is three radians per second. Since it is counterclockwise, that's a positive angular speed. The angular acceleration of body BC is also positive and is 2k radians per second squared. I'm going to use the typical the right x up y coordinate system. And the question is, if this is the plate, what is the angular acceleration of the plate? That's the question. Now you might notice that when we use vectors in these problems, it's nice to have some position vectors laying around that we can just pick up and plug in. For example, it's pretty obvious that point B is going to be a point of interest. And being able to write a vector from D to B and C to B is going to be important because point B is what constrains the two links together. Right? So I'm just going to write down the vector from D to B. Well, from D to B, that's pretty easy. That's 4i plus 3j inches. Okay, so 4i, go over 4, go up 3 inches, that's j, and that's where, we, that's how we get from D to B. The vector from C to B is, well, let's see, we got to go negative 6i, and we got to go up again, 3j inches. So let's just write those down so we have them handy for our use, okay? And then we'll start with velocity analysis. So for link BC, I know a lot about it. I know it's angular speed. I know it's angular acceleration. Of course, I'm not dealing with acceleration yet, right? But I know it's angular speed. And so I should be able to write the velocity of point B in terms of the velocity of point C. But C has no velocity, so there's just relative velocity. So there's just omega BC cross R from C to B. Okay. If we compute that, let's see, omega BC is just 3K crossed with R from C to B. We've got that. We can just jot it down, negative 6I plus 3J. Units will be, let's see, radius per second times inches, so inches per second. Okay. Computing the cross product, 3 times negative 6 would be negative 18K cross I is J. And then k cross j is negative i, so minus 3 times 3 is 9j. Uh, 
No, not on a card. Inches per second. So there's the velocity of point B. If I put it in the right order, I'd have negative 9i minus 18j for the velocity of point B. Now, if I reference the plate, I could talk about the velocity of point B prime, which sits underneath B. Okay, so that has a point hanging out in the middle of the slot, but it's attached to the plate. So referencing the plate, the velocity of point B prime, the point that's coincident with B, but on the plate instead of on BC, would be simply the angular speed of the plate crossed with R from D to B. Why? Because it's the same kind of thing, right? All I'm saying is here I've got a body rotating about a point, so the velocity out here has got to be something like that, right? In fact, it's negative, so it's, it's doing that. In the same way, the plate, yeah, there's a slot, yeah, there's no material there, but I can still talk about a point B prime. And by the way, this plate is just rotating about this point. So the velocity has to be something like that, right? And that's the point B prime. Now, B, B and B prime are two different points. They're just at the same position. So it's just an omega cross R. It's just I happen to not know the angular speed of the plate yet. All right. I do know that the angular speed of the plate, since we're in 2D, will be only in the k direction. And I'll need to cross that with the vector from D to B. So 4i plus 3j. Uh, these are going to be radians per second. These are inches, so again, inches per second for the velocity. No big deal. Take the cross product. K cross I is J, so we'll have, well, better yet, let's take K cross J is minus I, so minus 3 omega P I. K cross I is J, so plus 4 omega P J. Okay. <clears throat> now, the velocity of point B equals the velocity of point B prime plus the relative velocity of point B with respect to the plate P. This is an equation at the end of the section. It is 1533. They use the term F for frame. My frame is the plate, right? I'm looking at motion relative to the plate here. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, where I'm at. There we go. I know the velocity B prime, it's negative 3 omega P I plus 4 omega P J. That's the velocity B prime. And now all I need is the relative velocity. So let me just write it this way. The magnitude, well, wait a second, do I know anything about the velocity of point B relative to the plate? Let's say you're standing on a plate. Looking around, and you look at point B. In what direction could point B move? Up or down? It can't move sideways, can it? Because it's in a slot. So I know that this relative velocity must be in the J direction. I don't know if it's up or down. It doesn't matter. If I get a negative number here, I know it's down. If I get a positive number, it's up. But I'm just increasing my knowledge a little bit or incorporating something that I, I realize. But wait a second. The way that B moves relative to the plate can only be up or down because of where it's at. Okay. So if we were to combine uh, components in the same direction, this would be negative 3 omega P I, but then these are both in the J direction. So plus 4 omega P plus V B with respect to P in the J direction. V B with respect to P can still be negative. It could, I, I don't know. We'll find out. But this is another way of writing the velocity of point B. But oh, wait a second. I know the velocity of point B is negative 9i minus 18j, don't I? That's what I found out from the first thing by analyzing BC. So now, if I compare components, for example, the i component, what do we have? Well, on the right hand side, we've got negative 9. On the left hand side, we've got negative 3 omega p, and that's it, isn't it? So, what's the angular speed of the plate? three radians per second, right? Because negative nine divided by negative three is a positive three. So omega p is three. Now, is that in the positive or negative k 
sine direction. Well, remember, I just wrote omega p times k. That assumes a positive direction. Since I got a positive number, this is just k okay, per second. They didn't ask for that, but I need it. So I'm going to just write it down over here. So the angular speed of the plate, here, let me write it in a different color because we figured this out. We'll use, uh, what shows up on video, blue, green, or red? Depends on the marker, right? Or, uh, yeah, right blue out of those. Blue out of those? Okay. So the angular speed of the plate is 3k radians per second. All right. And it's counterclockwise, it's positive. Okay. What about the relative velocity? Well, if we look at the j direction, what will we find? We have negative 18 equals 4 omega p plus the relative velocity. But now we know that omega p is just 3. So this is 12. We've got to take 12 from 18. That's negative 30. So the velocity of point b with respect to p is a negative 30 inches per second. What does that tell you? that tells you B is moving down in the slot at 30 inches per second. That makes sense. If you think about the arm moving down, the plate rotating this way, yeah, sure, B is moving down in the slot. That makes perfect sense. So let's just make a note here that the relative velocity of B with respect to the plate is negative 30 J inches per second. Okay? That's what we just found out by performing the velocity analysis. Any questions so far? Why did we perform the velocity analysis when all they wanted was acceleration? Well, because we had to. The velocity analysis will feed into the acceleration. Without knowing velocity, we won't be able to answer questions about acceleration. Why not? Because when you have an angular velocity, you will have a normal acceleration. Without the angular velocity, you have no idea how much is the normal acceleration. So now let's continue with the acceleration. So, acceleration. For body BC, the acceleration is pretty simple. You can talk about the acceleration of point B. It will have a tangential component because of the angular acceleration. It will have a normal component because of the angular velocity. So that's easy. The acceleration of point B, which is the point on body BC, is just the tangential piece. and the normal piece. Now I'm not going to write out the normal piece as an omega cross omega cross r. Why? Because I know the normal direction is going to end up going that way. So if I have a vector from c to b, it's just in the negative direction. Uh, and this should be from c to b. Right? So this is the negative direction pointing from b back to c. So why write out the whole omega cross omega cross r just to find out that I've got the negative direction of c to b. Now, we know that the angular acceleration of body BC is 2k radians per second squared. We need to cross that with the vector from B to C. Uh, do I want B to C or C to B? I want C to B, don't I? Sorry, I wrote that backwards. The vector from C to B, yeah, because it's omega cross, or alpha cross R. All right, so CB. CB is negative 6i plus 3j, okay. and the first term, minus omega bc squared, and I just need to copy down the vector again, negative 6i plus 3j. All right, let's compute the cross product. Let's take k cross j first, which is i, two threes are six. Take k cross i, which is, uh, that should be negative, yeah, sorry. No, my fault. Uh, so k cross i is j, but this is a negative, so negative 12j. And then here we'll have, well, omega bc we know. This is just 3, isn't it? So 3 squared is just going to be 9. So we just need 9 times 6, 6 9s are 54, so plus 54i. And then minus three nines are what? 27. So minus 27j. 
now we can put all these components together. Uh, 54 minus 6 is 48. So 48i. And then negative 12 plus negative 27 would be what? Negative 39j. And those are just inches per second squared. Okay. So that's the acceleration of this point, point B. It's accelerating this way and that way. To the right and down. Now let's move over to the plate. Notice I'm taking the same strategy that I took with the velocity analysis. I wrote the velocity of point B in terms of body BC. Then I wrote the uh, velocity of point B prime under B on the plate in terms of the plate, and then I related the two together. That's the same thing I'm doing here. There's really no difference, except it's with acceleration. Okay. So with the plate, I'm going to write the acceleration of point B prime. Not surprisingly, B prime is the point on the plate just as it was before. And I would say that that was equal to the angular acceleration of the plate crossed with the vector from D of B. We go from here to here. So there's the tangential acceleration minus omega squared of the plate times R from D to B. Again, the normal acceleration pointing in this direction. And so negative of R from D to B. Expanding this just a bit, the angular acceleration of the plate is only going to be in the k direction because this is a two-dimensional problem, just as it was before. And that needs to be crossed with the vector from D to B. Well, the vector from D to B has 4i inches plus 3j inches. And then omega of the plate, we don't know the angular speed. Oh, no, we do know the angular speed of the plate. We got that, didn't we? It's 3k. So it'll just be 3 squared when we get to that point. And then r from d to b would be 4i plus 3j. See, it's a good thing we completed the velocity analysis. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the angular speed of the plate. So let's see if we expand this just a little bit. Uh, k cross j is minus i. So let's write minus 3 alpha p in the i direction. And then k cross i is j, so plus 4 alpha p j. Okay. And then minus, well, omega p is 3, so let's just write it as 3 squared times 4 i plus 3 j, and then we'll put it all together. So what would we have? Well, let's see, in the i direction we'd have negative 3 alpha p, and from here we'd have, what, uh, 9 times 4, and 4 nines are 36, so minus 36, because it is negative, and that's in the i direction. And then plus 4 alpha p j. And then again, minus 9 times 3 would be minus 27, so minus 27 in the j direction. Okay? That's about the best I can do with the plate. But now I can relate the two together. Now notice that the relationship between the acceleration of point B and the acceleration point B prime is not quite as simple as it is for the velocity relationship. Yes, we have the relative velocity term, but we now also have the Coriolis acceleration term. Okay, for the velocity, go back and look at page 1066, equation uh, 13, oh, excuse me, 1536 versus equation 1533. They look very similar, the only difference is the acceleration equation has a Coriolis term because these two points are not points on the same body. Okay? <clears throat> now, the acceleration of point B prime, we've already got an expression for that. What about the acceleration of point B with respect to the plate? For this, what I'd like to do, let's see, I think I'm done with these position vectors. For this, what I'd like to do is have you consider the plate itself. So considering the plate, point B uh, is right here. So if we're standing on the plate, looking at point B, what's point B doing? Well, it has to follow a curved path, doesn't it? Centered about point A. <coughs> so there's a radius from A to B. And point B is just moving around that curved path. Now, it may not be moving at a constant speed. I don't know. The point is that since B is moving on a curved path, isn't there 
a normal direction and a tangential direction. Now, why did I draw the, I mean, the normal direction inward makes sense. That's towards the center of gravity. How come I drew the tangential direction downward? Because remember, the tangential direction is defined by the direction of the velocity. But we already found that B is moving relative to the plate downward. So this is the positive tangential direction, at least for a normal tangential coordinate system. So couldn't I write the relative acceleration of B with respect to the plate as a tangential piece in what direction? Well, in the J direction. Is it up or down? I don't know. I don't care right now. Okay. A tangential piece plus the acceleration of B with respect to P in the normal direction. Well, that I know is certainly in the negative I direction. See that? So I can expand this term just a little bit, noting that there's a definition of a normal and tangential coordinate system, so I can write it as normal and tangential acceleration. Okay? Here's what's interesting. This normal acceleration can be written in terms of an angular velocity. Right? Or, better yet, in terms of a relative velocity. Remember when we had points moving around on a curve with some velocity? We had the center of curvature. We said that the normal acceleration was the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature. Remember that? We can say the same thing here. We've already got a relative velocity of this point with respect to the plate. So why not use it? In other words, why don't we write this as, let me just copy quickly. So there's the J component. Why don't we write this as a velocity squared velocity of b with respect to b squared divided by the radius of curvature, which is the distance between a and b. We know it has to point in the negative i direction, right? We already know this number. We can find that number. So we can actually get at this normal acceleration of point b with respect to the plate. Okay? So that's all we will expand this term. How about the Coriolis term? The Coriolis term is always pretty simple. So. If we go and look at it, that's why I had you highlight it or uh, put a line around it, a circle around it. Page 1066, the Coriolis acceleration is 2 omega cross with the relative velocity of B with respect to the plate. Well, that's not too difficult. What are we taking as our, our reference in this case? Our reference is the plate, right? Got to find my place. Here. So our reference is the plate. We're standing on the plate. Because, how do I know? Because I'm talking about the motion of this relative to the plate. Right? That's how I've been thinking about it all along. So this would be two times the angular speed of the plate. Well, the plate's moving at 3k radians per second. Since that's my reference, that's why I've changed symbols. But this is just the plate. Okay. So 3k cross with the, the relative velocity, but that's a negative 30j inches per second. So now all I have to do is calculate k cross j. So k cross j, that's minus i, minus times minus is plus. So we're just going to end up in the i direction. So the Coriolis acceleration will just point in the positive i direction. We just need 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 180. So 180 in the i direction. So the Coriolis acceleration is just 180i inches per second squared. Now we have everything we need in order to plug into this equation and write down the acceleration of point B. Now notice I've got the acceleration of point B from bar BC. I'm working with the plate. That's how I knew that my reference was the plate, because that's the body I'm dealing with. Okay? So let me erase this bit because we don't need it anymore. We've already incorporated it. Uh, actually, maybe I didn't. Well, I'll write it down again. So the acceleration of point B can be written in terms of, yeah, I didn't need that. I needed A, B prime, and I just erased it. Hopefully this looks familiar. Negative 3 alpha P plus 36 I plus 4 alpha P minus 27 J. Does that look familiar from what I had just a moment ago? It was right about there, I erased it. So that's this AB prime. 
And then the relative acceleration I can write as, uh, let's see, let's put it in proper order, minus VB with respect to P squared over R A B I plus um, acceleration B with respect to P in the tangential direction J. And so that's the acceleration B with respect to P. And then finally, plus the Coriolis acceleration. So plus 180I. That's it. So we've got A, B prime here, acceleration B with respect to P there, and acceleration Coriolis there. And that's all we need from here. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and uh, do some substitutions. I probably should have done this as I moved up, but let's do it here. So the velocity of V with respect to P is 30, right? If we square 30, what do we get? 900? Is that right? So this would just be 900. The distance between A and B is just 4 inches. So what is 900 divided by 4? That would be, uh, what, uh, 450 divided by 2, 225? Am I thinking right? So this is just negative 225i. Now it looks like I've got a problem because I don't know this tangential acceleration. But all they asked me to find was the angular acceleration of the plane. So let's at least look at the I component. Looks like we know a lot on the, in the I direction. We've got uh, negative 3 alpha P minus 36, just expanding that out. That's in the I direction. Minus 255 in the I direction plus 180 in the I direction. Okay. That's all the, the right-hand side. But I know the acceleration of B is just 48 in the I direction from an analyzing BC. So now I can solve for alpha P. In other words, the angular acceleration of the plate. So what do you get when you solve for the angular acceleration of the plate? I'm going to make sure you guys remember it. Okay, so it's negative 43. Negative 43, that's right. So, negative 43 what? Radians per second squared. And so what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that the angular acceleration of the plate is negative 43 K, or in other words, positive, well, no, negative 43 K, radians per second squared. So the plate is actually accelerating in the clockwise direction. Okay. At 43 radians per second squared. Okay? That's all they wanted us to find. Could we now find the tangential acceleration of point B with respect to to P in the tangential direction. We could if we wanted to. But I don't know that it's all that interesting. All we have to do is write down the J component. Now that we know alpha P, plug it in, and we can calculate. Because notice we know it's negative 39. So we'll just set those equal and we'll be done. Questions? See a lot of confused looks. I obviously see a lot of board news. A lot of vector analysis here, which takes a while and can be pretty tedious. That's why I showed you the uh, this trick. Omega squared in the negative direction, right? Makes it easy. Less cross products to deal with because that pro cross product always comes out the same way for them. Okay? All right. There are no questions, and that's it.